Okay, in this one we're looking at airflow through the cowling, basically to help diagnose uh, oil leaks. So normally we got ram air coming in through the front, travels through the cylinders, down through the bottom of the cowling, and then travels out the bottom of the cowling in the low pressure. So the airflow, it's ram air that's going in through the cowling, it's high pressure meeting to the low, and then going out the bottom of the cowling. You've got inlets on the Cherokee 6 um, here on the bottom side. So you get some, some impact pressure that goes into the lower side of the cylinders, but not near as much that will come through the ram air through the front of the cowling. So same on the left side. We've got the, the vents. You get some in there. Ram air comes in through the top, goes in between the cylinders, down through the bottom cowling, and then out the base that way. So that's your typical airflow pattern. So we're going to try and remember that when we try to troubleshoot the possible oil leaks. Uh, next step we'll go, I'll pull the cowling off and we'll pinpoint areas that are typical leaks on light combings if you have them. All right, let's talk about leaks. So what we're going to look at here is an 0540 light combing. Uh, the, I'll show you some kind of typical places that they, they tend to leak if they're leaking. Uh, this isn't the end all be all video. So what I kind of point out here is our typical places. Obviously, if you got a crack part or something or broken part somewhere, it could leak from all kinds of different places. But this would be like typical wear and tear points or typical leak points on the light combing. So let's start at the front. Um, if you have propeller leaks, uh, maybe you suspect sludge or a, a grease problem, maybe the, um, the cuffs. Typically, if you're leaking grease from the prop hub around the cuffs, you'll see that impacted up on the back side of the spinner here. You can usually stick your finger there in and grab grease and stuff on your fingers if, that's, if the cuffs are leaking. Um, moving back, right behind where the propeller mounts, you've got your crank. Uh, let me change hands. You've got your crank flange behind the, the, the backing plate and the ring gear. And then you've got the crank seal around the, the prop flange. And then you've got the crank seal on the case half. So those typically, if they're leaking, they're gonna be coming through here. And depending on where the leak is, if it's on the top half of the case or the bottom half of the case, will kind of dictate the direction it's going to go. So if we remember our airflow, airflow is going to come in through the front of the cowling here, get forced over the top and then sent down through the cylinder fins and the center of the cylinder fins there. As it travels through the cylinder fins, comes out the bottom of the engine between the cylinders and then goes out the bottom of the cowling there. So that's the typical flow as it comes in, goes down. So if we have a leak up here, that airflow is going to generally drag the oil along the case and then start pushing it down. So if you have a leak up here, if it's on top of the crank, the case versus the bottom tends to dictate where it's going to go. So if it's leaking down here, the ram air is going up, up this way. So a bottom leak will tend to come down to the bottom, the case have, and then follow the case seam all the way down to the sump and then work its way down the sump that way. So if you have a, a crank leak from the bottom, it tends to follow the bottom of the case seam to there and then disperse. It can go down. It can, I've seen some where it follows along the sump rail and ends up, you know, on one side of the engine and getting tracked back that way. So you could have a leak up here and it's just going to get pushed all the way back to the engine. On the bottom side, it's not going to get blown as, as quickly as the top because the top's getting all that ram air. The bottom, for the most part, is a static type pressure, so you're going to get a little bit of flow that's going to go that way. And then once it hits where the air is coming out of the cylinders, then it starts getting pushed more aggressively backwards towards the, the rear side of the engine. So if you got a leak up here, uh, where's my pick? The prop governor, if you got a prop governor, this could be a pad. Um, most of these prop governors right here on the top, there's a little lead plug that's 
under the pad for an access port when they machine the base of this. So if it's if that has come loose, usually there's no amount of torquing and sealant here that will fix that. It'll start just kind of weeping in constant speed mode. You'll get just a little bit of oil that starts wicking out here, and then it the ram air that's coming over the top drags the oil around the back. It ends up down in here and then can work its way back that way if it's a lot. So if, if that's a heavy leak and where that plug's loose, this will just get usually totally coated with oil all the way back. Um, there's enough ram air that's coming up from the cowling here that leaks here often spray up onto the top cowling. So when you look at the cowling on the back side, where that prop governor sits, a lot of time you'll see oil streaking starting near the front and working its way back. So if you got stuff coming out the door, look to see if it's leaking here. If it's all wet on top, there's a good chance it's that that governor seal there. Um, another possible point. So you got all the push rod tubes. Those could be wet from underneath or on top. The, the oil will just trick around and then drip and then airflow pulls it backward. So if you're looking at your engine, you see it's wet to say here, but then it's dry from here to here. You know that you, that kind of leads you in that this is the start point of the oil leak. If you got a leak way up front, that's going to carry all the way back. So you may look and say, "Oh man, my cylinders back here are leaking," but really it's something up the front that's just getting pulled back and then pushed down through the the base of the cylinders. Uh, we talked, or somebody mentioned the oil filler. Uh, most of these engines, this is like a, a composite material. And it's not uncommon that they break. You know, you've got the cam point, you've got the seal here around that. That needs to be tightly fitting. If it takes no effort to close that, that's, that's a possible point of leak. Um, this can be broken. I've seen them where the threading's cracked down here. Somebody tightens these and then the years are going in and out with the thing breaks that loose. But it usually doesn't break up here where it's meaty. It'll break down below the, the gasket surface here. And I happen to have a broke one. So here's the, the top of the filler tube. It's plastic, or you know, like it's not phenolic, but it's a composite material. So this one actually was, was on, installed, and it was just leaking right out of the base here because the, the composite fittings were, were cracked. So that had a big crack there, and it was just leaking out here. And then it would leak from this point, then ram air that's coming in here would grab it and pull it down the cylinders in there. So you know, you, we saw it out the bottom as being all pukey and wet down there. However, we trace it back, you see that the wet point starts here and the air comes in, grabs it, and then just pulls it down through the cylinders that way. The same can happen with any of these push rod tubes. So if it's leaking here, air can come in and pull it down. The farther front you go, it's going to drag it back. Um, if it's base cylinders, so depending on your engine model, some of these are through studs. The ones that are through studs go all the way through the opposite side case. And they could be floating studs, depending on the age, it could be anchored studs into the engine case. So if it's a through stud, there's gonna be some type of O-ring that's in the center of the case, where the case comes together with that stud, and the O-ring seals the oil from coming out that way. If it's leaking around one of those studs, um, it could be a sign that the o-ring has failed or been compromised on the inside of the engine the unfortunate part to that if that's leaking out of the stud there there's not a whole lot you can do to fix that shy of pulling the engine apart um, but that could be there's also under the stud here around each base of the cylinder is a base o-ring that goes between the cylinder the, the cylinder and the flange and the the mating surface the case halves so that usually is presented as leaks not necessarily from a stud, but you'll see general wetness along the base of the cylinder where that will just kind of weep and then it gets grabbed and moved around. Typically these ones don't leak a lot unless it's fairly loose. Um, that could be hap happen from age or if somebody uh, nicked the O-ring putting it together is a possibility or they get dried out and they you know, you get a little bit of heat and expansion and that O-ring kind of gives up the ghost and you start leaking there. So that's typical leak points here. Anywhere along these push rod tubes. And then on the opposite side of the engine, or the opposite side of the cylinders, you got the push rod tube seals that are in the head itself. So here, 
those can leak as well and then that just tends to ooze down the cylinder head so the biggest part of trying to figure out where the oil leaks are is try to isolate the area the region that it's happening but you gotta have to remember that the air coming in over the engine is going to pull fluid down as the as the ram air is going down through the cylinder so it, a leak here could end up through there down there end up down here and then dripping out the bottom and you think well man i got something underneath leaking um let's see so these points so uh here's your feed rail this this channel here this hump that feeds that's the galley that feeds all the lifter bores and the prop governor so if you got leaks around this hole there's a, a, a pipe fitting there this one i would urge you not to just put a, a wrench on and tighten um, I've seen several instances where the case was broken here where people over torque that and then the, the housing cracks So don't do that torque them to specs. They should have a sealant on them. There's one there if it's leaking out of that That might just need to be redone So that's the top side of the engine crank flange sometimes if you look if you get a strong powered flashlight and you look down inside of the ring gear the flyway you can see oil pooled up down there that'll give you an inkling if the crank seal is leaking sometimes it'll pool down there but most of the time it doesn't leak statically it leaks when it's you know you're running the engine so oil will build up and then work its way back but oil leaks down there the bottom will go down the bottom of the engine typically the top they get pulled up along the seam and then blast it all over the, the rear of the engine now on the back sides, you got the seams of, or on the, the back of the engine, you got the seam, the spine bolts where the two case halves come together. Those are possible places of leak. Once again, if it's leaking up here and the ram air could be pulling it back that way. Uh, you could get leaks out of these bolt holes. Um, there are some, we'll say unapproved methods I've seen for trying to improve leaks here. The sad part, once these leak here, Really, the only solution is to, uh, the only sanctioned solution is to pull it apart and redo it. But sometimes you think the time between overhauls in the year, you know, they say you got to overhaul it every seven years or nine years or whatever. Um, I think those are more to account for leaks in these kinds of components. Anyway, so that's typical leaks there and then obviously there could be cracks literally anywhere in the engine typically on the light combings you'll get cracks if the case is going to crack it'll go between um through studs you know between here and there or up on the nose where the um, um nose bearing goes through you'll get cracks between these two points um and then it will leak out you know the case will leak here and then you'll get oil flowing back that way those typically you don't if they fail uh, people tend to try and solve those leaks over a period of time because they're often hard to find before the crack gets a sizable amount where you can see it real easily all right so let's look underneath the engine or on the side so on the head side we've got the rocker covers you've got the gasket that goes under the rocker covers those there's two varieties. You got the neoprene and then those cork ones. The cork ones tend to get brittle really quick and then leak out of there. Probably 99 out of 100 times the leaks coming out of the rocker box covers are as a result of these the cover screws being over torqued one too many times and it just damages that gasket. These neoprene ones, when you put them on, they need to go on dry. Don't put sealant on them. And then the surface on both sides needs to be impeccably clean. But if those are torqued and then retorqued once after about 25 to 50 hours, they usually do pretty well at staying dry. Backside engine got the case halves here, and then you've got the where the accessory case bolts on to the back of the engine. Leaks up top will generally work their way down around the seam. And then they end up down at the bottom of the engine, and then you think, oh, my sump's leaking one. Well, oftentimes, it's not the sump. Another point on light combing engines that gets kind of wet is right where the case... You can see that with 
right where the case, um, the accessory case, the sump, and the case halves meet. Let me get that focus on there. Right there, oftentimes that's a leak point because you got two gaskets that come together to form a T, and usually they're not the best fitting. So usually as the engine ages on light comings, that's a common point you'll see leaks. Um, underside, let's go to the other side, it's easier to see. Is on the bottom side of the cylinders, you've got base mounting nuts. You've got the oil drain back tubes from the cylinders. And right there, you've got an oil drain back tube here. So that as the oil comes in through the top of the engine, goes through the push rod tubes, feeds the rocker arms, and then drains back to the drain tube here, and then trails back to the case through those um, hose fittings that are barbed into the engine, the case halves. So if you look at that, there's a little piece of hose that connects the, the engine barb fitting to, it's almost like it's better without the light. Um, these, so the drain back tubes here, and then you've got the little rubber piece there. So those are just held in with hose clamps. Right at the end of those, you know, over time that hose gets brittle and dry rot, or get, sees a little bit of cold flow. People tend to torque those clamps. They torque them a ton, and then they just kind of crush the hose or the tube, and then oil will come out of the tube here. And usually, you can see the oil at the edge of the drain tube where it goes into those rubber fittings. Um, there's another view there. So those, usually, if they're wet on the ends of those hoses, that's a sign that the They've either been over torqued, not torqued enough, the hoser, dry rod, etc. So those are cheap enough and easy enough to replace. Anytime there's an oil fitting on the backside, so, you know, out of the oil cooler, the fitting there. If these get over torqued, the housing in the oil cooler gets cracked there, that can leak. Obviously, any hose areas of hose connections on the back. Um, Hose connections up top so where that and fitting gets threaded into the oil cooler right there um, if that oil cooler is cracked that can leak and the upside to these leaks back here is they're not they're not usually getting blown around by the ram air so if, if that fittings leaking usually just sprays below it and it's easy to source the ones up front are a little more challenging because if it's leaking up here it gets drugged to the back and then you got to figure out where it's coming from obviously any accessory points you know, the vacuum pump, magnetos, those could all be source locations, but I'm not going to go over that. Um, let's see. There's the backside of the through bolts on this case. So if the cylinder bases are leaking, they tend to go to the bottom and then work their way back. So you can look at the base there. Uh, what else for cylinder case leaks? I think that's about it. You know, look in there, that oil pump's leaking. Like I said, most of the time the, the governor, when that's leaking, you'll see it come out of here because it'll leak out of that. That fitting comes loose and it works its way back. And then that, if the gasket's loose here, base nuts. Um, this, the unfortunate part, if the gasket's at the base nut, if you determine it's a base nut gasket, the only way to fix that O-ring that's in there is to pull the cylinder off. Um, that's pretty much it. Hope that helps.